welcome. Happy fun and free paint party Thursday. Um, if you're able to watch and join, say hi, let me know you're here. Uh, let me know where you're watching from. What are you up to today? I'm a little bit early. Um, but that's okay. All right, so let me uh, just double check and make sure everything is a-okay. -okay. Oh, look at there, I popped right up on my Facebook page. And comments are there, hopefully. And so just, there we go. Okay, looks like we're good. How is everyone today? We are painting this super cute little piggy today. And honestly, I had no intention of doing um, the pig or the cow, but after we did the sheep last week, I thought it would be fun to have a little series or um, for the sheep to have some friends. So I kind of just put these together last minute. I had other things planned for the upcoming week, some florals and things, but that can wait. Okay, let's see if I can see. Okay, so uh, if you're new here and don't know me, my name's Bertie Larson and I run Redbird Designs, which is a small little business ran out of uh, my home. Um, we have uh, a painting membership, so I teach women how to paint um, to uh, grow in their painting skills, to find a community of like-minded artists, to um, benefit from the healing uh, or to gain the healing benefits of painting um, and so that's Redbird Retreat and that is going to be opening up here pretty soon uh, in May. We are at our one year anniversary so keep your eye out for that. It's going to be a great week of a lot of fun activities and things when we open that up. Um, and then we also have um, a DIY craft club, craft box club uh, membership where I send um, our members a box every month of a craft. It contains everything they need to accomplish and finish that craft. Um, so it's a little bit of joy in the creative process delivered to your door every month and so those are the two main things that we do and then we also have uh, we do a little bit of some custom orders um, we have uh, DIY kits on our page and then we also just go live and paint with you guys here on our page okay so that's a little bit about myself if you didn't know and see what else before we get started. I think that's it. I think we can get started with this really cute pig here. So I'm going to switch us over to the overhead camera and we will get started. Oh, um, I almost forgot. Um, if you want to join and you would like the supply list um, and the tracers for this. It is available on our website at redbirddesigns.com. Let me just throw the link in the comments right now before I forget. And they're free. Um, you click on um, the little link next to the picture that says download here and then um, put your email in and we will email you a zip file. Well, my website does it. Um, and 
The zip file after you um, uncompress it or unzip it contains three PDFs, the supply list and um, a tracer for the top part and a tracer for the bottom part. We are printing or painting on an 11 by 14 for this one, so that's why you get two, so you can print the top and bottom there. Okay, I just want to make sure that went through. Let's switch us over and get started. Hi Sandra, good to see you. Or good to see you join us. Okay, so I'm a little bit behind today. I usually have my tracer already finished, but well, it won't take us long. All right, so like I said, you get a top and a bottom. Uh, when you print them out, you're going to just line up the images. So there's a bit of an overlap right there. Then take some tape and tape them together. So next week we're doing the cow. If you haven't seen the event posted yet, we have the, let's see if I have it, the dancing cow. And um, if you didn't know, um, usually, let me get my words right here. Usually we do our fun and free on Thursdays of the week. And next week we just have some other things going on. Um, it's a busy week for us, so I had to push that to Friday. So mark that on your calendar if you're looking forward to that and you're used to seeing us on Thursday with these. It's going to be Friday next week, same time, 12 to 1. And I've got to see some of your guys' cute little sheep. You guys did amazing. I can't wait to see um, your take on the sheep. So I aligned my tracer to my surface. Like I said, I'm print, um, painting on 11 by 14. I'm using a mixed media type paper. It's the Canson brand from the oil and acrylic pad. It's 136 pound paper, which is great for um, eliminating um, a little bit of warping and buckling. There are still um, some of that happens, but that 136 pound paper really, really holds up well to that sort of um, issue there. So where am I at here? So remember, if you're new to graphite paper, graphite paper has two sides, a shiny side and a dull side. You just want to make sure to put that shiny side down on your surface and then we're just going to take a pencil and with the medium pressure trace over all our lines. We'll just double check everything's there. If it looks good then we can remove our tracer. So this little sheep is um, pretty easy, just a few um, areas, you know, the eyes can get a little complicated, but I'm going to step you through it. This is going to be easy peasy. The flowers are the same that we used on the sheep, um, and so we will get started here. Let's talk about the paint. Now, um, I'm going to show you and tell you the paint that I used, but there are no rules. Use whatever colors that you want or have on hand. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy the exact same colors that I'm using. Find something close in your stash if you have one and that will work just fine. So I've got a black and a white here. I've got this parrot blue, but I feel like I used something else for this one. 
of prior to that. But this will work. This is what I have right here in front of me. <laughs> Again, exact colors don't matter. Um, just a light blue for that background will be great. I actually might have used the blue bonnet. No, we'll go with the parrot blue today. Um, I'm using a green, Kelly Green from Apple Barrel for the leaves. I've got a lilac, lilac mist for the flowers, a bright yellow or a cadmium yellow, and what else? I'm using a pink. Razzleberry for the darker flowers up on top here. And then I also use it for a little bit of some accent in the sheep. And then for the sheep itself, I'm using um, Cameo Pink. And that's it. We're gonna use a large flat brush today as well as a couple rounds. Again, no rules there, so use whatever brush you are comfortable using. If you're new to painting, go ahead and follow my suggestions for brushes, but as you grow and learn and uh, practice and experiment, you'll quickly find that there are brushes that are your favorite, your favorite shape, um, all of that. I've seen artists who love working with a flat brush or artists who love working with the filbert style which is a flat that's rounded over um, but I really like working with the round brushes so again as you paint more you will I'm trying to find my liner here you will um, develop a preference to a brush there's one. Oh, my liner is in my water oh my goodness okay I have got way too many brushes here <laughs> trying to find the ones I like from my stash. Okay, so a flat, um, a liner, and then a couple different sized rounds um, is all you need for that. Let's get this mouse out of the way. Bring over the pad. Okay. So let's start with this background. The background is just a mix of the white and the blue and we're going to use both colors on our brush and get a really nice um, soft blended look back there. Get some of this white out here. Got a clog. take our large flat and we're going to load it up with the white. Make sure that you have a lot of paint on there. Don't be shy. Don't be hesitant. Go ahead and just push that paint around and that's going to really fill up all those bristles and get enough paint inside there. You don't want it dripping off but you want to make sure that you have enough. This is really going to help you push that paint around and not get frustrated with blending. Okay, so once I've got white on there, I dip it into that blue. So just a little bit of blue on there. And then we're going to come out to our surface and just do a bunch of crisscrosses and X's and random brush strokes. And so you can start to see how we get this really nice blended look. Some areas are darker. We see a little bit of that light what are that white poking through um, which is what we want the key here is not to over blend keeping some of those bold brush strokes so we don't end up with just a light blue and also make your brush strokes a little bit bigger the smaller the brush strokes the smaller the um, the blend is going to look, we kind of get different uh, brush, 
um, blend if we keep our strokes small. So by that I mean, let's see if I can show you here. If I come over here and I just do little brush strokes like that, it looks a little bit different than if I drag my brush and make big X's. Okay. So it will, and again, no rules. If you want to do smaller brush strokes and keep those small, tight brush strokes, you're going to get a really pretty background. It's just going to little, look a little different than mine uh, because I'm using bigger brush strokes. My brush strokes, you know, kind of tend to be about two inches long if I can work that in the area. The other thing is, is if you get an area that's a little bit too dark here, I had mostly blue on my brush. No problem. Just grab some white and go right over it and just blend that blue out a little bit. And we just lighten that up. So I'm just continually adding a bunch of white to my brush and then a little bit of blue. And if you noticed, I'm also not concerned about cutting in around my pig or my flowers. I am just going right over those lines, essentially coloring outside of the lines because my next coat is going to cover all of that. But by being kind of messy and pulling those brush strokes into the pig and into the flowers, I get a more natural occurring background and I'm not creating this brush stroke right around everything which can cause a little bit of a, a glowing effect if you would whether you're using a bunch of white or blue around that and so just pulling in that brush stroke just a little bit around everything helps um, eliminate that okay Get that little pig in there a little bit Okay, and so a very quick, easy background. All right, so let's get our first coat down on our little pig here. I'm gonna get some of this pink. I'm using that Cameo Pink for the base coat, and I'm gonna continue to use my large flat. It's a big surface. It's gonna help me cover the area fairly quickly. We'll just start up here in the ears. And so this first coat isn't going to really show much. It's not going to look all that great. But as we add our layers, we will start to define areas. We'll define the nose and the ears a little bit more. I always say that uh, the paintings look, or our paintings, always go through an ugly stage. It's always about the layers. The next layer is just going to add another texture, another dimension. And so, don't give up, especially on that first layer. Keep going. Just got to get past that ugly stage of the painting. So I'm going right over the face there that uh, I had traced on. This pink is fairly light and translucent, so I can definitely see my nose and my eyes kind of peeking through that, so I'm okay with that getting covered. Put his little shoulders down here and his body. from Oregon, funny little pig, hello, welcome, Nancy, welcome, okay, so let's let this dry a little bit, well, actually, I'm just going to switch brushes, 
We're going to come in with a little bit of this darker pink here and create a little bit of some shadow with it. And typically when I create a shadow for, um, whether it's for a building or something else, a flower or something, I'll add another color to my original color. For In this case, we're using this pink. Um, I could definitely add some black to it and darken it up that way, but it's going to create more of a gray color uh, for a shadow. Um, I could add some burnt umber to it to darken it up. So a lot of different ways that we can darken that pink up, but in this case, I'm just going to grab a pink, a dark pink bottle. And it's a little bit bright. So what I'm going to do is take some of that pink some of my original pink and kind of mix it together and get an in-between there. I'm just using a darker shade of pink to darken up the pink that I already have. And then I'm going to take some of that and let's see we've got this little area under his chin here that I'm going to darken up so I'm going to just brush a stroke through that um, I'm going to take one down the shoulder here. We'll go under his chin here. Over here. And add a couple brush strokes down over here. It's kind of in this dark corner there. So I'm going to um, add a little bit more of that dark pink. If you get it to be a little too dark or you don't like these really bold brush strokes, just dip your brush back into that original pink, that cameo pink, and just blend it out a little bit. This little guy is a little bit of an abstract. He's got some really harsh lines and, and I kind of like that um, style of painting sometimes. So you can see some of these really bold brush strokes. Um, and if you look down right on them, they can kind of look a little bit off, but when you pull away from it, it um, kind of adds to that whimsical feel of the entire painting. Hello from South Carolina. Hi, Nancy. Glad you could join. Are you painting along or will you paint later? Is anyone painting along? Okay, so let's grab a little bit more of that dark color, that darker pink. I'm going to add those um, kind of around the face here. And then I'm going to also outline the nose. And I'm going to mix the two colors, that darker pink I created with a little bit of that original, and fill in his nose here. Just a little more of that dark pink here. I'm going to add a little bit of that dark pink to the bottom side of his ears, or her ears, his ears. I'm going to add some dark right up here on the top of the head here. Most of this is going to get covered up by flowers, but what I want to happen is if there are any areas where a flower or a leaf isn't covered, we want to have that shadowy bit underneath of it so it um, gives it that dimension. Grabbing a little bit of the regular pink and kind of blending that in, pushing that color back just a little bit, and then also pulling it back, pulling it over this area where the ears are. Okay. All right. 
so what I'm going to do next then is create a light pink. So I'm going to grab some of this pink here off to the side and a little bit of white mixed in with it. And we're going to add some highlights. So we'll add a highlight on the top of the ear here. A little bit lighter. There we go. And we'll come over here to the top of this ear. So I added the light on top and the dark on the bottom. And we'll streak just some white or light pink around the face. The top of the nose here. And then I'm going to add a little, a couple little brush strokes kind of where between the eyes here. Kind of giving that impression that we can see the top of the nose a little bit. And actually maybe I'll just grab a little bit of the dark. The light pressure, try and create some thin lines up there. So we've got that look that we've got the little scrunched up nose there. Nancy's going to be painting later. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit of the dark and add just a little bit more some bold brush strokes around. So just a light pressure, kind of just dragging that darker pink in different areas. And you can go ahead and just even grab straight pink right from that bottle, that Razzleberry, and add some brush strokes here and there. Okay. Alright, so what I'm going to do is um, let this pig dry. We'll come back with black here in just a little bit. But let's move on and get some of these flowers filled in. I'm using three colors for my flowers. I'm using the Razzleberry. I've got a yellow flower. Hopefully I have enough yellow paint here. yellow and then the lilac mist. So I've um, got the razzleberry is a bigger flower, the yellows are the bigger flower, and then I have that lilac mist as some smaller, smaller filler flowers. So we are using the same technique that we used on the sheep. We're just creating these circular blobs of paint. We don't want them to be perfect circles. Go ahead and have some waviness to them. That helps us create a flower easier. Okay. And then also let them overlap the top of the pig's head, the head, and maybe a little bit of those ears. So we've got three of the bright pink flowers. We give our brush a quick little wash. And then let's move to the yellow. My 
brush went right in with that pink and pulled some of that pink in with my yellow and that's okay. I'm okay with Kind of got this corally looking flower over here now with that blended pink and yellow. Okay, let's go grab some of that purple. A couple small flowers in here and fill in areas that we need to. As I'm working, my paint is still pretty wet on my other flowers, and so even with this purple here, it's pulling in a little bit of that yellow, and that's okay. This is just the first coat, so if that happens to you, um, you know, it's fine. We're going to be putting some more coats in there, and so a little bit of some blending is all right. pig here is doing. I think we can move on to filling in the ears and the eyes and the nose while our flowers dry a little bit. So we'll get a little bit of black out. I'm going to drop down to a smaller round and for the pig usually when I outline or um, I define the edges. I create really light, um, super skinny outlines. And for this uh, painting, I went with more bold, scratchy type outlines. Um, let me pull that up for you to see here. You can really see how, you know, they're messy, they're scratchy, they're more thick than not. We've got some scratchy outlining here. And it's just a different way to outline. I kind of like how it um, looks more like, um, what's the word I want to use? I'll have to think about it. There's a word there. Um, but it's almost like it's using more of a thick charcoal type outline um, as opposed to a really thin brush stroke. And if you want to use um, a small liner and get more of a thin uh, outline, um, that's completely up to you. Let's start by um, putting in the little eyes here. I wanted this to be a little bit looser and um, so I wasn't going for the thin lines. I tried to keep it quick, which then forces me to not um, be so perfect. We got these little eyes. So these are um, little U-shaped, upside down U's filled in, and then we'll come back in with some white and define those pupils in there. And then, let's see, for the nose, the little um, nose holes here, we've kind of got this uh, little oval with a tail on it. Just a little bit of a smile right down here, a little smirk in the corner. Okay, so for the out, oh, let's do, let's fill in the ears here real quick. A little bit. 
build up some a black triangle almost with a little bit of a curve in there. Okay. And then so for the background to keep it um, loose and have more thick, uh, scratchy type um, outlining, I hold my pen up here, which forces my hand to not be as precise. Um, and I do quick little brush strokes, light. I let my brush kind of run out of paint, which gets me that scratchy look. And I just work my way around until the point where I need to reload and then I get a nice solid line. But as I run out, and I try and do short choppy lines as well. We get that fun, whimsical look there. And I create a line over there and there. Get that shoulder on that side. Okay. And then we'll do the nose. So short, choppy lines. And I think that's it for the outlining. The, um, once we get the flowers done, we'll come back and give these um, the lines on the outside, which help portray movement, makes them look like he's dancing or moving enough that, you know, he's dancing so much that flowers are flying off the top of his crown there. Okay, so let's go, um, let's see, our flowers are still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna grab my, excuse me, my liner brush. I'm gonna go into that white and just lightly create a circle inside the eye. And then a little dot along the top for a little glint in the eye there. And there we go. And then while I have white, I'm gonna add a couple bright white highlights around. So we'll touch the top of his ear. We'll drag some white around the face. Sweet little chubby face. We've got the top of the nose right there um, where his nose is scrunching up and then also the top of the nose inside the outline there, the snout. And I'm gonna also put a little highlight above his little mouth down here. And then while I have white on my brush, I'm just gonna add a couple dots up here. So we have a little bit of some white um, petals flying by out there as well. Okay, so I think we're ready to move on to the um, flowers. So we're gonna start with our large pink flowers. And the way that I do my flowers is I load my brush up with that original color and then I dip it in white. And what we're gonna do is create little brush strokes from the center that um, mimic a parenthesis or a smiley face. And we're just gonna start and do small little brush strokes and then work our way out. So I grab a bunch of that dark pink and then I dip it just in that white. So I have both colors on my brush. I decide where my center is gonna be. So I put a little point there. And then coming out from that, just brush strokes that are that parenthesis or smiley face. Load up with the pink, dip it in the white, Choose your center, and then work your way out from that. Okay. P 
pink and white. Another thing that you want to think about when you're creating flowers too is where you put your center. Don't always put your center right in the center of the flower. You want to offset that a little bit, um, which might mean that you have a few more brush strokes on one side because you're seeing the flower off to the, you know, it's turned a little bit. And it just gives it a more natural look if you have some a little bit offset and the flowers are turned a little bit one way or the other. Okay, that's it for those flowers. I'm going to give my brush a wash here, and we'll do the yellow. So again, we're going to load up with that yellow. I'm going to dip it in the white. Choose your center, and create those arches, those parentheses, and as you get further from the outside, they might get a little bit bigger. So for this one, I've chosen a spot a little bit further down, and so in doing so, my flower is pointing down towards um, the, the pig's face. So what's going to happen is here I've only got one or two of those parentheses, those small little brush strokes, and then on the back side here is where we're going to see a little bit more. So now that flower is turned down a little bit. The other fun thing that you can do with these flowers is combine the colors. So you can um, have your base color and then use another color to create the petals instead of white. Um, maybe for the dark pink flowers you use the light pink with it or you could even combine a little bit of yellow in there and, and insert some other colors. For the purple you could add um, light pink in there. You could do um, just experiment with different colors and combining those colors in your flower it makes for some pretty interesting um, flowers and if you have both those colors on your brush and let your brush uh, blend those as we're making those brush strokes um, you'll get a little bit of a blend and that can add to some pretty unique flowers. Okay so we're going to go to the purple now again loading up my brush with that purple I'm going to dip it in the white I'm going to choose a point in the center and my purple flowers are a little bit smaller so I'm really going to have maybe just two to three brush strokes working my way around that center. one here. Okay, one last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce um, another color into these flowers for the center. So for the pink flowers, um, the dark pink, I'm going to do a purple center. So what I'm going to do is just load up my purple and drop some in the center of my flower there. Push it around a little bit so it's not a perfect circle. And then for the yellow flowers, let's introduce that pink as the center. So drop a little bit of pink in there. Push it around, blend it a little bit with the white that's already there. And then for the purple flowers, let's do the yellow as the center. There we go. Okay. 
that is our flowers. We're going to um, come back to those in just a little bit, add a little bit of some black um, defining lines, but let's go put our leaves in while they dry for a few seconds here. So for the leaves, we're just looking for spots where maybe we need some filler and then just adding um, maybe one or two in that spot. So I've got two here. Um, maybe there's just one poking out right there. Maybe one there. We've got this kind of spot here where we've got a couple larger ones. Put one right there. I'm going to just double these up down here at the bottom there. And you could also add some flowers inside here. I've kind of got this empty spot here, so I can just put a little uh, leaf inside the bouquet. Maybe we add one right here. And I've got a little empty spot right there. And there we go. So leaves are great little fillers for empty spots between flowers too. <coughs> While I have green on my brush, I'm going to just tap a few green dots out here. I should have done that while I was working with my flower colors as well. Okay, so let's um, actually, we still got some flowers that are pretty wet, so I'm going to go back to the dark pink and add my little dots up above here as the wind catches those as the pig is dancing we're losing some petals so just little presses of your brush there's no brush stroke I'm just pushing down a little bit and it creates this little look of a leaf so we've got the dark pink the light pink I actually shouldn't have done the light pink. I really don't have light pink flowers, but that's all right. We got purple, and then last we'll do yellow. There we go. Okay, so let's switch to our liner brush and let's put in our little squiggles and our movement lines. I've got my liner brush, which is the tiniest round. We're going to grab some of this black and we're just going to create little short lines around the pig to help show that he is moving and dancing. Come around the flower even. Also going to bring a couple down around his chin. And I think his little nostrils need to be just a little bit bigger. They're looking a little small. snout. Her snout. 
do you think a girl or a boy I keep saying he but she's wearing the flower crown so maybe it's a girl So the flowers are dry, so what I'm going to do then with my liner brush is bring in just a few um, defining lines to define those petals. So essentially doing the same thing with my brush stroke, just creating those short little um, parentheses or arches inside the flowers. And I'm not worried about trying to line them up with brush strokes that are already there. Um, these are totally random and not connected to what's already there. We're just adding a few here and there. Okay, and then I'm also going to add a few outlining lines around my leaves. Oops. Forget about the leaves inside here. There we go. So very quick, quick little brush strokes around those. Um, I did not outline them in their entirety. Um, some I did one side but not the other. So I tried to keep it random and fun and whimsical and not complete outlines. What do you guys think? Something fun, cute, cute and fun, Nancy says. Thanks, Nancy. So I've got this little bit here that the, the face kind of comes out. And what I think happened is I didn't bring my ear down far enough. So what I'm going to do is just kind of take away that line there. This is a great example of how flexible paint is and we can push and pull and create new layers and reshape things as we need to. So I got rid of that line and then the next thing is, is I'm going to bring the black down a little bit further to help reshape that and then we will do that. And that gives us kind of a better shaped face there. So don't be afraid to experiment with your layers. And um, if you don't like something, just let it dry, cover it back up with that original color and, and try again. And so that really helped kind of pull that side of the face back in because it was kind of a little bit wonky. There we go. That is our dancing little pig. Let me remove my tape. So, and I didn't mention this at the beginning, and if you're new and this is your first time watching, I like to tape my paintings down. Um, one, it helps hold my paper in place, and two, it gives me a really nice, clean, white, faux frame around my painting. So in this case, you see I'm working in my sketchbook, my mixed media pad here, and my paint goes all the way to the edge, which is great. I love that too. But um, I also love using this paint technique. And so if you want to do this, make sure that you're using a 
masking tape, a low tack masking tape. You can even get painter's tape, but this is just, I think, what is this? Well, this is like painter's tape from a hardware store, but you can actually get artist painting tape. And just, um, I don't measure, I just eyeball it and tape it down. And it's never very perfect, but I think it looks all right. Um, and then when you tape it down, one thing that you want to do is just take your finger and give it a good burnish or a rub along the edge so that you create a good seal so your paint doesn't seep under and cause it to um, bleed. And then also carefully tear off because your paint might still be wet or it might um, be wet underneath around the area where the paint is and it can cause your paper to tear too. So just take it nice and slow, kind of pull at an angle helps to remove that when you're done. So you can see the difference. I've got this nice white edge as opposed to this. Either, I love them both. Um, it's just kind of fun to do something a little different once in a while. So let me hold this little guy up. You can see those brush strokes in the flowers. They're very um, loose and abstract. The bold brush strokes around the pig, short and kind of scratchy in some areas. But that is our dancing pig. So what a cute little series this is going to be. We've got our sheep and our pig. And then next week we are doing the cow. Remember, the cow is scheduled for Friday. We had to reschedule, um, which uh, we, we try and do the fun and free on Thursdays. Um, but we did have to reschedule for Friday. So Friday at noon, we will do the cow. Don't forget to sign your work. Um, and if you paint this, um, I would love to see your work. I would love to see your take on it. The beauty of art is everyone does something a little bit different. Um, we might all have the same subject matter, we might all have flowers on the crown, but everyone's going to do something just a little bit different, and that's the beauty of it. And so share your work, um, and let me see what you guys are up to. You can, um, I might as well, I, I should mention, you can share your work right on Redbird Design's Facebook page. You can share your work inside of the um, discussion of the event. You can share your work in the discussion of this live. You can message me if you're not um, as confident to post it um, to the public yet. Um, but I do encourage that. The more we post, the more confidence we get and the more confidence we get in our art, the more we create art. So it's just this really great snowball effect. So um, take cur uh, have courage and post your work and we will all be encouraging of your art. So but feel free to message me as well. Okay, I think that's it guys. I hope you like this one. I hope you have fun with it. I hope you enjoy your time painting and find um, some recharging and healing while you paint. And I think that's it. I don't see any other comments. I'm just kind of checking comments to make sure I didn't miss any questions. And it doesn't look like it. All right. So I will let you go. You guys have a great rest of the week, and we will chat with you next week. Thanks so much. Bye.